2023 has been one heck of a year for cinema so far. Whether you've been craving action-packed blockbusters, glossy prestige films, or innovative lo-fi indies, 2023 has delivered in spades over its first six months, enough so that singling out just 10 of the best movies sure isn't easy. But hey, we've had a crack at it. And with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 best movies of 2023 so far. Number 10, Air. An origin story for a shoe doesn't really sound like a recipe for a great movie. But as ever, it comes down to the script, the filmmaker, and the cast at the center, and in all of those areas, air passes with flying colors. Even if you don't give a damn about basketball or Michael Jordan's iconic Air Jordan shoes, and let's face it, I'm from the UK, so that's all kind of lost on me, there is plenty to enjoy in this witty light on its feet drama about how the shoe paved the way for athletes en masse to reap greater profits from their image. Ben Affleck's direction isn't flashy, but it approximates the mid-80s setting perfectly, while the ensemble cast, especially Matt Damon, Affleck, and Viola Davis, are all terrific, and the earnest tone impressively avoids making the whole thing feel like mere capitalist backpatting. As well as this movie plays to broad audiences though, it goes without saying that sports fans and those who actually own some Air Jordans will especially eat this up. So, after this movie, the question is, is Ben Affleck back on top form as a filmmaker? Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm pretty inclined to believe it. Number 9, Scream 6. Scream 6 almost had everything right. If not for a rather weak ending that feels pulled from a completely different movie, this would have been way higher on the list. But let's not dwell on the negatives. That's because for the majority of its runtime, Scream 6 fires on all cylinders, delivering one of the nastiest entries in this franchise to date, with a ghost face more brutal and cunning than ever. The set pieces are more inventive than the previous installment as well, whether it's ghost faces assault on a cramped NYC apartment and a treacherous climb to safety, or an attack staged on a packed subway car, Scream 6 isn't lacking in intensity. Even better, these pitch-perfect segments are propped up by engaging characters. The new cast was already great in the previous installment, but they're further developed here. Like the original movies, Scream 6 knows that you need to care about its heroes, and as such spends time inviting us into their world and their personal dramas, which of course makes it all the more brutal when they're inevitably put in danger later on. The New York setting is really what elevates and differentiates this sequel, though. It's kind of cliche, but it does become a character in itself, completely changing the atmosphere and tone of the movie. As someone who wasn't all that hot on the initial Scream reboot, this was a pleasant surprise, even if it doesn't completely stick the landing. Number 8, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. James Gunn's final contribution to the Marvel Cinematic Universe doesn't solve every problem the franchise is facing right now, but it does confirm just how much more compelling these movies are when audiences actually care about the characters. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is very far from perfect, what with its over-egged runtime, excess of characters, and sometimes uneasy lurches in tone, but it nevertheless delivers an emotional and satisfying farewell to the MCU's most endearing band of misfits. Gunn has such a firm handle on these characters now that there was never much doubt whether he'd land the ship in graceful fashion, smartly shifting the focus to Rocket Raccoon here for a boldly dark trilogy closer that subverts expectations in a number of clever ways. It's certainly a bittersweet experience in feeling like an epilogue to the Infinity Saga, effectively saying farewell to the few remaining characters fans en masse are truly attached to, but following so many uneven mid-entries into the series, it's also a hugely refreshing tonic. Number 7, Blackberry. Now, nobody could be blamed for having little interest in watching a movie about the stratospheric rise and meteoric fall of the Blackberry. But much like David Fincher's The Social Network, a potentially mundane story can be rendered riveting in the right hands. And Matt Johnson confirms himself as a sure filmmaker to watch, with this unexpectedly gripping docudrama centered around Blackberry's founder and his fiery, industrious business partner. While the casting of Jay Baruchel and Glenn Howerton in the lead roles might lead you to expect a laugh-a-minute comedy, Blackberry isn't quite that, even though it's certainly consistently hilarious throughout. 
This, rather, is a witty, genuinely involving dramatization of how the BlackBerry paved the way for modern smartphones, even if its fate was ultimately also sealed by the ubiquitous success of the iPhone. Johnson's roving, docu-style camera work is perfectly suited to the material, though the real reason to watch this film is Howerton's mesmerizingly edgy and anxious performance. For a film that just about everyone scoffed at when it was first announced, this is one of the year's most pleasant surprises for sure. Number 6. Bo is Afraid Ari Aster's hypnotic fever dream of a third feature certainly won't be everyone, let's get that out of the way right away, but it is a darkly hilarious nightmarish vision that just might be one of cinema's all-time great depictions of anxiety. If certainly far more challenging than Astor's prior films Hereditary and Midsommar, Bo is Afraid leans on a superb performance from Joaquin Phoenix as a man tearing apart at the seams following his mother's death. Boldly hopping between genres at a moment's notice over the course of its admittedly overlong three hours, this is an ambitious lunatic odyssey, the sort of which rarely gets made these days. So, love it or hate it, it definitely makes one hell of an impression. If she were to alienate as many, if not more, than it entertains, Bo is afraid proudly flies the flag for original, boundary-pushing cinema, and that's sure something well worth celebrating. Whatever the case, whatever Asta gets up to next, it's sure to be one hell of a sight to see. Number 5. How to Blow Up a Pipeline Sure to be remembered as one of 2023's most provocative films, How to Blow Up a Pipeline follows a small group of environmental activists as they plot to, well, you might have already guessed it, blow up an oil pipeline. What's most striking about Daniel Goldhaber's film is its refusal to moralize, offering up an objective, non-judgmental look at these individuals in the final days before they carry out their plan. That's sure to make some viewers uncomfortable or even outright angry, but at its heart, this is a superbly well-crafted movie, and the fly-on-the-wall filmmaking shot in gorgeously intimate grainy 16mm combines with a terrific ensemble cast of rising young actors to make this a thriller as genuinely tense as it is thoughtful. So yeah, don't let this one slip through. Number 4. Rye Lane Proving there's still plenty of life in the rom-com yet, Rye Lane takes the confined scope of the before movies and melds it with the eye-wateringly dynamic visual palette of a Wes Anderson film to deliver the genre's best effort in, well, forever. Rye Lane takes place over the course of a single day in South London as two newly single strangers get to know one another. It's a familiar enough setup, yet per the wonderfully witty script, charming performances, and evocative sense of time and place, this is an 82 minute gem of a film that's quite tough to resist. As a testament to both the rom com and British indie cinema as a whole, Rye Lane finds profundity in human connection while proving that rom coms need not settle for flat utilitarian lighting and dull, washed out colours. Number 3. John Wick Chapter 4 Despite the third John Wick movie setting a seemingly impossible standard for balletically brutal action, Chapter 4 somehow topped it against all odds. A 169-minute globe-trotting epic that largely earns its concerningly expanded runtime. The latest sequel doubles down on its pulpy world-building and, most importantly, gives audiences a supersized serving of eye-meltingly gorgeous, blood-soaked mayhem. Keanu Reeves gives arguably his most compelling performance as Wick yet in a film that one-ups the carnage to surely can't be undone levels, while Donnie Yen steals every scene he's in as the blind, wise-cracking assassin Kane. It'll certainly be interesting to see where the franchise goes from here, but if this does indeed end up being the linear swan song for Reeves' assassin, well, he's ducked out with one hell of a masterful finale. Action cinema is rarely this exciting, technically impeccable, and darkly hilarious all at once, ensuring that director Chad Stahelski has cemented himself as an all-time great filmmaker in this genre. Number 2. Are You There God? It's Me, Margaret Judy Bloom's legendary 1970 novel gets an outstanding adaptation from Kelly Freeman Craig, who also directed The Edge of Seventeen, which, in a just world, should caught serious awards attention by year's end. An incredibly warm, charming, coming-of-age dramedy, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, captures the anguish of early adolescence in a confrontingly honest manner sure to resonate with plenty of people across the globe. Yet Craig's refusal to sanitize the tricky edges of burgeoning womanhood differentiate it from similar films. 
With Hollywood generally still fearful of broaching the subject of menstruation, it's refreshing to see a film engage with it in a manner so matter-of-fact and, eventually, surprisingly emotional. Though it sadly bombed at the box office despite rave reviews, you suspect time will be kind to this movie and it'll win itself quite the cult of fans on streaming. Number 1. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse But the film to be this year is truly one of the finest superhero movies and sequels ever made. Impressingly living up to the brilliance of its groundbreaking predecessor, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is a sequel that raises the scope in jaw-dropping ways while maintaining tethered to what made the original such a breath of fresh air in the first place. And first and foremost, this movie is gorgeous, incorporating a litany of distinct animated styles into a whole that somehow feels totally cohesive. If the multiverse as a concept is already starting to feel a little tired in Hollywood, Across the Spider-Verse proves that it's still got plenty of mileage in the right hands, weaving a clever, cheekily meta-narrative that's as dramatically satisfying as it is packed with fanservice. Even if you're struggling to muster much enthusiasm for superhero fare as of late, this is a majorly refreshing piece of work, as the original was as well, both in terms of its technical ingenuity and its bold, character-driven story. If the filmmakers can stick the landing with next year's Beyond the Spider-Verse, then they'll have delivered one of the greatest movie trilogies ever made. And also, just as a heads up, try to see this before it gets spoiled, because there are some mwah, delicious twists and turns in there. So, that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think about these movies and what tops your list so far this year? Let me know. And while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.